Hi everybody, this is John Murray. Armando May wrote a book titled The God Secret, in which he lays out a strong astronomical case for the Giza Plateau pyramids and structures being aligned to the constellation Leo in 36,420 BCE, not in 10,500 BCE as Befal theorized. He believes the ancients built the Giza Plateau to commemorate the date of the height of that civilization. But ask yourself, would you take 100 years to build the Giza Plateau just to memorialize one date in time? Or would it be simpler to carve it in a stone tablet? What logical reason would the ancients have had to undertake such an incredibly massive, laborious project that does make sense? Well, stay tuned to find out one possible explanation. First, if we look at the progression of the Nile River over the last 5,000 years, we see that it has mostly moved eastward. As most of you are likely aware, there is strong evidence that the Nile came right up to the causeway off of the pyramids circa 10,500 BCE. But if the Giza Plateau was built 25,000 years earlier, as May says, then where did the Nile River come up to relative to the causeways back then? If we assume the builders built the causeway right up to the Nile River, then how likely is it that the Nile came right up to and exactly right up to the causeways in 36,420 BCE and then again in 10,500 BCE, given its gradual move eastward in the last 5,000 years? The odds of that seem very slim. Next, upon analyzing the astronomical alignments at Gobekli Tepe, Dr. Robert Chalk theorizes that the Orion Taurus region of the sky has been a focus of ancient humans for tens of thousands of years. This then is reinforced by May's and Baval's theories. Next, in his book, Lost Star of Myth and Time, Walter Cruntenden puts forth a theory that the star Sirius is the sun's binary twin star that there is a common center of gravity between the Sun and Sirius, and during precession the two stars move closer together. If you watch Ancient Architects' video titled 36,420 BC, Zeptepi and the Age of the Giza Monuments, he examines May's theory in detail and points to the tomb at Kenkoe on the plateau as representing the star Sirius. Finally, in 1894, Indian philosopher Sri Yukitswar said in his book, The Holy Science, the sun has a binary relationship with Sirius. He said the interaction between Sirius and the sun is the cause of the great ages, or yugas, of the Hindu beliefs, which cycle in a period of roughly 24,000 years, similar to that of precession. So let's tie all this information together and ask, why did the ancients, who clearly understood celestial mechanics at a level far beyond ours, spend such incredible building resources over millennia of time to simply mark celebratory dates on a calendar in time. Does that make sense to you? Was it simply to gaze at the stars for their personal entertainment? To me, this does not make any sense at all. Would you do that? Or would you rather go and plant crops and live a normal life? There had to be some overwhelming reason the ancients, probably mobilizing their entire populace, felt compelled to mark the date of 36,420 BCE for future generations to take note of by building the Giza Plateau to model that specific year. What then is the possible solution to this conundrum? Hmm, let's think about that. Consider this possible solution. Perhaps they weren't modeling the Giza Plateau upon the date of 36,420 BCE, but rather they were modeling the specific astronomical configuration that occurred on that date. On that date, the Sun was in a specific alignment with her twin star Sirius. She was in, within a certain proximity to the star Sirius. On that date, Leo was on the horizon. On that date, seven planets were positioned along the ecliptic in a perfect row. 
On that date, there were likely gravitational and or electromagnetic forces interacting with our Sun in a powerful manner which is currently beyond our understanding of solar physics and the galactic plane and its influence upon the Sun. Dr. Robert Schock has established, and if you look at my first video on time boxes on Gobekli Tepe and the pillar at 43, the pillar number 43, that the cyclic solar plasma waves occur about every 11 to 12 or 13,000 years. The precession is variable, but lasts somewhere less than 26,000 years, and half that, of course, being about 12,500 or 13,000 years. So perhaps what the ancients were really marking by building the Giza Plateau was an alignment of planets, of our relationship with our binary twin star Sirius, and a certain position relative to the galactic equator, which when it occurs, directs gravitational and or electromagnetic forces upon our Sun, which then cause the Sun to expel a massive amount of solar plasma. Perhaps what the ancients were really marking was when the civilization ending Cetus occurred, that is, solar-induced dark ages, as Dr. Schock defines them, this as a warning to prepare for the next. In this scenario, then, the Cetus occur every time Leo is on the horizon, every time the Sphinx aligns with Leo on the horizon, and also halfway through the precession between Leos, that is at about 12 to 13,000 years, and at about 24 to 26,000 years. In this scenario, the ancients weren't saying to us, the future, hey, look at us, look how great we were in 36,420 BCE. Remember us, marvel at our grandeur. But no, they were saying to us, watch out for this specific alignment or something close to this astronomical alignment, this position of our sun to her binary star Sirius and to the galactic equator and to possibly gravitational and or electromagnetic forces we have not yet discovered acting around us. Because that is when the sun will be influenced to eject civilization-ending solar plasma. In this scenario, then, the theory of May is right, and it is also wrong. He is correct in that the ancients built the Giza Plateau to model the sky in 36,420 BCE, but not in his conclusion the plateau was built then, or simply as a commemoration to glorify the height of their civilization. Rather, it was built circa 10,000 BCE, as Baval says, but to model the sky, the astronomical configurations of 25,000 years earlier. It is truly an assumption to think that simply because the Giza Plateau and the pyramids align to the Leo configuration of 36,420 BCE, that that proves the plateau was built then. It does not. That is an assumption. The surviving Atlanteans left all kinds of evidence of the latest solar outburst circa 10,000 BCE, and everybody was aware of it then, so they felt no need to model the sky after the 10,000 BCE event. Everybody knew about it back then, and they thought it wouldn't be forgotten this time around. They thought they had made sure of it. But they built into the Giza Plateau the day to the previous event in Leo, to thus leave knowledge that the seed has occurred cyclically and in every age and in the two ages of Leo, that is, 36,420 BCE, and then again circa 10,000 BCE, and at the midpoints. If you watch my video on Did the Ancients Leave Us Proof of Cyclic Solar Plasma Waves, and also my video on The Melted Stairs, you will see my evidence and my reasoning for the theory that the ancients left us proof in the form of edifices of these cyclic solar shockwaves. It is also possible in this theory, and in fact probable in my opinion, that the 36,420 BCE astronomical configuration shown by May was a prime example of the offending configuration which likely triggers a Ceta event. Such events are probably cyclically triggered by less symmetrical planetary and star configurations as well. But this may be why the ancients chose the 36,420 BCE event to outpicture on the Giza Plateau, because it was the most dangerous one 
and the most symmetrical one and the obvious configuration for us to recognize and see what its true meaning is in today's time. You decide, which is more logical to you? This theory, or that a highly advanced, intelligent, and cultured ancient civilization did for the span of 100 years spend incalculable time and resources modeling the Giza Plateau simply to mark one date in time as a commemoration to their societal egos. You decide. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, like, and send this video to all your friends.